Hello and welcome to this video. This time I would like to explain about the session parameter as an array. To understand the session variables better, it is necessary to understand the HTTP protocol a little more. HTTP is a stateless protocol, which means that there is no way for a server to remember a specific user across multiple requests. For example, when you access a web page, the server is only responsible for providing the content of the requested page. So, when you access other pages on the same website, the web server takes each request separately, as if they were not related to each other. If you want to show information related to a specific user, we should authenticate the user in each request. Imagine you had to enter your username and password on each page that shows your profile information. Yes, it will be awkward and not practical, and this is why the sessions come into play. The following chart reflects how the HTTP protocol works with sessions. A session allows you to share information between the different pages of a single website or application. This allows the server to know that all requests are from the same user, allowing the website to display information and preference specific to that user. Sessions should not be confused with cookies. Cookie is a method that allows you to save information on the client's computer to retrieve it in the future, while in sessions the information is kept on the server until the session is closed, by user intervention or by time. Let's see some examples. In PHP, sessions are created using the session start function. If the session doesn't exist, this function creates the session and associates it with a unique session identifier. If the session already exists, this function allows the page to have access to the information linked to the session. Once the session starts, we can use session variables through the session parameter, which is an associative array, where each variable is accessed from its name. In this case, user data and the session data are in the array created previously. In that way, when entering this page from the browser, our session will be created with the data that we have placed in the array. If the session has already been created, the pages requested by the same browser can save and retrieve information on the server. The information is retained until the user or server destroys the session or close the browser. In other words, this profile.php page has access to the session parameter that contains the session variable created on the login page. To see if a session variable has been created, we can use the isset function by passing the user data variable that we created earlier as a session parameter. If the session variable is not created, that is, the user directly entered the profile page without first having created the session on the login page, we will show a message rejecting the access because the session variable was not created. Let's see this in the browser. Both the user and the server can log out. The user can destroy the session by closing the browser. The server can destroy the session when any page uses the corresponding function or after a certain time. In this case, we will use the session destroy function in order to end this session. And when this happens, the session variable will not be available. So we will show a message saying that the user is not logged in, inviting him to log in again. Let's see how it works. In that way, we will be able to create sessions easily and manage each of them using these basic functions. 